Today we will be lighting the second Advent candle, a candle that stands as a signal of peace. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him and his dwelling shall be glorious. We are the followers of that root of Jesse that Isaiah spoke of. We are the ones who are now called to stand as a signal to all the world, to all of creation, that peace is the will of the one who created us. Peace is the knowledge of the Lord that we proclaim from sea to shining sea. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, and bear fruit worthy of repentance. We light these candles. First, the candle of joyful hope. And second, the candle of proclaimed peace. We light these two in part to remind ourselves that we are a people rising towards God's promise. But we also light them as a sign to the world, an announcement that there are some who hold on to the hope and there are some who work for the days of peace. We stand as a sign that Emmanuel is still our fervent prayer. Grab a cup of hot chocolate, sit back and relax. It's time for Chrismons with Pastor Ebb. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome back to Trinity Online. My name is Ebb Hagen. I'm the senior pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church in Fort Walton Beach. Today we're going to continue on with our study, our look into the symbolism of chrismons. If you recall, chrismons are ornaments that go on a chrismon tree, like the one behind me. Chrismon tree is a lot like a Christmas tree, but they're always decorated with symbols that point us towards Christ. Chrismon means Christ monogram. So they are literally symbols that point us to Christ. Today I'm going to start with a chrismon that's a little bit odd, especially because I don't like snakes. It is the tall cross with a serpent. Now the tall cross is considered to be an anticipatory cross. The early church fathers saw it as one of the signs from the Old Testament that foreshadowed Christ. And during the Middle Ages, the tall cross became associated with healing. Now, I'll give you a little bit of history behind these things. In Hebrew, the letter Ta was represented by either a plus or an X. As a letter with two lines that cross, the Tav was viewed by early Christians as a letter that represented God. The mark, the mark was used in baptism and for protection, following in the use of Ezekiel 9, which I'll explore in just a minute. Now, the Greek Ta, which is a little more familiar to us, represents Theos, or God. As a mark, a large T appears in some of the uh, inscriptions of the earliest signs found in catacombs all throughout Rome and surrounding areas into Palestine. Early church fathers found three signs of the Ta mark as an anticipatory sign of Jesus Christ. First, and I'll go back to our chrismon, it was, the Ta cross was a mark of the faithful. In Ezekiel 9, the letter Tav, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is placed on the forehead of the few Israelites who disapproved of wickedness. Those without the mark were seen as sinners and received punishment. It was also a mark of protection and salvation. The mark on the door during the Passover, when God passed over the homes of the children of Israel while slaying the Egyptian firstborn back when they were in bondage, was believed to be a top sign. It was also seen as a sign of healing. In Numbers 21, 6 through 9, snakes attacked the people of Israel while they wandered the desert. And when this happened, God told Moses to make a bronze or a copper serpent and place it on the top of a pole. 
And if bitten, those who looked at the pole would be healed. And that's where we get this sign right here. Today, when we look to Christ and Him crucified on the cross, we will also be lived, saved. John 3.14 actually reminds us that just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man, Jesus, must be lifted up that everyone who believes in Him may have eternal life. So while, yeah, that creeps me out a little bit, that's a wonderful symbol of our Christian faith. Next, we have a little bit more familiar symbol right here, right? It is a butterfly. Pretty sure you've seen many, many people have these on their bodies as in the form of a tattoo. Now, the butterfly has been seen by the early church as a sign of transformation in Christ. Jesus' work was not finished when he died for us on the cross. He did not stay in the tomb, but burst forth alive on Easter day. The victory is his, and the resurrection is the symbol and symbolized by the butterfly. Just like a seemingly lifeless chrysalis bursts forth into a beautiful new butterfly, so did Jesus' lifeless body burst forth from the tomb into victorious resurrected life. The life cycle of the butterfly is like our lives as well. The larva can be compared to a lowly sinful body. The chrysalis, cocoon, is like our bodies in the grave. And the butterfly symbolizes the glorious bodies we will have someday when we receive eternal life. And the last one, last chrismon I'll share with you this week is the hand of God. Now there's many forms of the hand of God. You see some pointing up, some forward, some going down. This one is considered the Latin hand of God. Now this is used to symbolize God the Father. There are many verses that speak of God in terms of the hand. Isaiah 48, 13 signifies him as a creator. My hand laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand spread out over the heavens. When I summon them, they stand at attention. Psalm 139 verse 10 symbolizes the hand in, in a way that it shows us that God is a protector. Even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. Now many different positions of the hand are used to symbolize God, the Father. Well, as I said before, this is the Latin form. It has three fingers pointing up, the thumb and the these two fingers, which represent the three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now the two fingers that are closed pointing down show the twofold nature of Christ, that he was both God and man. Now the circle around it, if you'll remember from last week with our manger, is a nimbus. Once again, the nimbus is a sign of sanctity. This means that God the Father is holy. And there's three rays that are coming out. One's hidden by the two uh, fingers going up. The three rays which represent the deity of, deity of God. This means that he is supreme and powerful. Now some pastors, including myself, hold their hands in this position as they give the benediction at the end of the services. That's because they are pronouncing God's blessing upon us. If you notice during almost every single service without fail, when I close, I say, put my hand up just like this. Say, may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Hope you enjoyed these three. Stay with us the next couple of weeks as we bring three more each week.